Hello class, today we are going to learn about the treatment of geochemical data. So in a geochemical survey, once you have collected your samples and you carry out geochemical analysis of these samples, what you get is geochemical data. Now this geochemical data is just a bunch of numbers or values which denote the concentration of elements that you have analyzed in order to prospect for ore deposits. So this geochemical data has to be treated in such a way so as to bring out characteristic variation in the elemental distribution or you can say the anomalies in the geochemical data. Now these treatment involves some approaches or analysis method which causes the anomalies to stand out from the rest of the geochemical data. But before understanding the treatment of geochemical data, we have to understand what is the nature of geochemical distribution in earth materials. We know the earth's landscape is shaped by a number of processes. These processes are tectonic processes, processes which operate on the surface of the earth, weathering, erosion, deposition. All these processes produce a distinct geomorphic landscape. Similarly, the process of dispersion, we have primary processes and secondary processes. These processes cause the movement of earth materials and they result in the dispersion of the elements. So the pattern which emerges out of because of these processes has to be a reflection of all these processes and this pattern or the picture which comes out is referred to as geochemical landscape. Now in analogous to the geomorphic landscape where we have mountains, peaks, that is peaks, plateaus, plains, in a geochemical landscape we also have a similar variations. So ge geographical variation in the concentration of the geochemical landscape is referred to as geochemical relief similar to the different relief for example mountains plateaus and plains in a geomorphic landscape we have different geochemical relief in a geochemical landscape now this relief they can either be denoting the anomalies that is contrast for example the similar to mountains or they may represent plateaus or plains which implies the homogeneity of elemental concentration right so here we are understanding we are understanding geochemical landscape and relief in a way similar to geomorphic landscape and relief right now the picture or the pattern of elemental distribution that comes out or that emerges because of the number of processes that are operating beneath the earth as well as on the surface of the earth produces geochemical landscape and so this geochemical landscape gives a distribution, gives a clue about the distribution of geological units. Now our interest of our geological unit of interest is the ore deposit and so these patterns will also be a characteristic or will point out to some ore deposits. But recognition of these patterns that are because of the ore deposits require First, the estimation of the elemental distribution in the normal rocks, which are not mineralized. That is, we have to find the background pattern of the unmineralized rocks. So the geochemical landscape is a reflection of the geological units. But our interest, our geological unit of interest is the ore deposit. But in order to separate or find out the pattern which is due to the ore deposit, we have to first understand what is the pattern which emerges out because of unmineralized rock. This is known as background values. So the background values they are defined as the normal abundance of an element in barren earth material. And this background values varies as a result of uh, varies as a result of the variation in the environment. And it also depends upon the nature of earth's material, whether we are looking for in the soil or in the glacial till or whether we are lo looking it in organic debris, the background values changes. 
The background is therefore not seen as an absolute value. It's rather a range of values. Okay, and for our convenience, what we do is we consider the magnitude of background values that we should expect in rock to as the composition of average igneous rock, that is, felsic or mafic rock. So the background of any earth material we approximately take as the composition of average igneous rock and not the ore deposits okay so what is threshold now in the previous diagram you must have seen we have plains we have plateaus and mountains the plateaus they rise above the plain similarly in a geochemical landscape threshold are the concentration which rise above the plains the homogeneous values so the threshold they are the upper limit of normal background fluctuation so that we know the background has a range of values the threshold is the upper limit of the normal background fluctuation now the regional threshold here you can see this is the regional threshold is similar to the low-lying plane here of the geomorphic landscape this is the regional threshold so a higher plateau of values which rises above the regional threshold is a local threshold which is analogous to a plateau. So regional threshold is similar to the plane and local threshold is analogous to a plateau. Right? So threshold we have to understand is the upper limit of the background fluctuation because the background is not an absolute value but rather it is a range and the upper limit is referred to as the threshold. Now let's see what is a geochemical anomaly. Look at the definition. Read the definition. The departure of geochemical patterns from that of the normal of geochemical landscape is a geochemical anomaly. As I talked before, that the geochemical landscape, which is the distribution of pattern of element, is a reflection of the geo geological units. So this geological unit can consist of unmineralized rock or mineralized rock. So unmineralized rock would have a pattern and mineralized would, rocks would have a different pattern. So it's a departure of those geochemical pattern from the pattern of what we see in normal unmineralized rocks. So geochemical pattern in the unmineralized rock is the background so the departure from the pattern of the normal unmineralized rock in a geochemical landscape is thus a geochemical anomaly. Now we have already learned in our class that the geochemical anomalies they arise because of genesis or due to the erosion of ore deposits. We have understood this as primary dispersion pattern and secondary dispersion pattern if you remember from our lecture of topics of 2.2 okay so the anomalies they are nothing but the geochemical pattern they are the geochemical dispersion pattern epigenetic syngenetic that we have already uh, we have discussed in the class so these geochemical anomalies they are nothing but they are the geochemical dispersion pattern in the geochemical landscape which are, are a dis which are a departure from the geochemical pattern of the normal unmineralized rocks. Now there are two kind of geochemical anomalies. Our anomaly of interest are these significant anomalies which are directly related to ore bodies and they are used as guides in exploration. There are non-significant anomalies which arise because of non-geologic factors. It can be sunlight, drainage, pH, drainage, a number of other processes. They are similar in magnitude to significant anomalies, but we have to separate these anomalies from the significant anomalies. Now, in the next point, it's the only the high concentration of indicator elements they have the ex, the application in exploration because we are looking for an excess of concentration in the earth material. So, negative anomalies, that is, concentration of element in earth material less than the background value less than the normal value they are the negative anomaly negative anomalies do not find any application in exploration as such they may have application in environmental sciences or any other sciences 
but in exploration it's the excess or you can say the positive anomalies that find the application so in a geochemical landscape we have low-lying plain which is a regional threshold we have a plateau which is a local threshold and there are some peaks that rise above the local plateau or they can also rise above the plain these isolated peaks over the threshold on a geochemical landscape these are the anomalies they can rise above the geochemical relief that is plain or the plateaus they are similar to the peaks in a geomorphic landscape so geochemical anomalies they are expressed as contrast and this contrast is the ratio between the peak and the threshold value the concentration of the peak and the concentration of the threshold it can be regional threshold or the local threshold so you have to know you have to remember this the geochemical anomalies they are expressed as contrast which is not the difference it is in fact the ratio between the peak and the threshold values so let's see how a geochemical data is treated it was Aarons who argued that most of the geochemical data of igneous rock and earth material they show a no log normal distribution rather than normal distribution now if you look here in the diagram on this side on the right hand side the blue curve is the normal distribution now it means the most of the samples they cluster in the center and they are symmetric about the average the mean values so they would be this would is referred to as the normal distribution but it has been found the geochemical data of earth material they follow log normal distribution it means it means most of the sample they cluster in this part and the higher values higher the samples which have higher concentration they have a long tailing end they fall under this long tailing end so this is referred to as log normal distribution now when we apply log function to the concentration of metal content it becomes symmetric about the geometric mean means this blue curve represent normal distribution this orange curve represents log normal distribution but this is when we plot it on a normal graph paper when we apply log function to this blue values it becomes symmetric about the geometric mean means the log normal the log normal concentration of values of the metal content when we apply log function they become similar to the blue curve that is they become similar to normal distribution this is why they are referred to as log normal distribution so in the lower diagram in the diagram which is at the bottom you see here we have applied sorry log values to the concentration so once you apply log value to the concentration it becomes symmetrical about the geometric mean and it becomes same as the normal distribution but the function here we are applying is the log function on the concentration of metal content so this is why this is referred to as log normal distribution so in the diagram above we are plotting the values on a normal graph paper in the lower diagram we are plotting it on a logarithmic paper and that this is why the log normal distribution shows a normal distribution in the logarithmic paper so the logarithms of the metal content they are distributed symmetrically about the geometric means now why the geochemical data shows log lo, log normal distribution now we know this pattern or this elemental concentration they are not just because of a single process in fact a number of processes are operating and produce and results in dispersion of element so the dispersion is a combination of multiple factor and since it's because of multiple factors it is unlikely the distribution would follow a normal distribution therefore it becomes it has a log normal distribution where most of the background values they plot here on this side but anomalous value or higher concentration plot on the right hand side under the long tailing end this is the long tail tailing end okay next is the physical constraint now we know the elemental concentration of rock or soil cannot be negative it always has to be above zero so zero is your lower boundary but there is no limit to the 
concentration no upper limit to the concentration it can be high it can be extend to infinite right in normal distribution for example the distribution of heights uh, of the students in a class there is some upper limit six feet is the upper limit right but if we look at the distribution of the element concentration in the earth material it's the excess you can go for the infinite in the upper limit the upper limit is just infinite okay there is no limit so intuitively the con this distribution is more like is more similar to a log normal distribution now the processes the which causes dispersion they are not uniform in fact they are very episodic they are rare events or they are extreme events so these events since they are episodic or rare the distribution they produce is also skewed means through a uniform if the distribution is uniform if there is some process it will lead to excess sudden excess or abrupt increase in concentration it means there is squee squeed skewed sorry skewed concentration or skewed distribution and we know log normal distribution is already skewed so we can understand the distribution of geochemical data best through log normal distribution okay but in order to define anomalies first it becomes necessary to establish threshold so that it becomes possible or easy for us to limit the search for peak anomalies once we have the threshold any concentration above the threshold will mark as the anomaly right so first we have to mark the threshold so in the treatment of geochemical data first you have to understand that geochemical data follows a log normal distribution that is when you apply log function to the concentration of metal and when you plot the frequency when you plot the frequency of total values against the concentration what you will get is a symmetric distribution symmetric distribution and this is why they are log normal distribution and in order to find the anomalies we have to establish the threshold first now the best way to graphically represent the data is through histogram now what are histogram histograms are simply bar diagrams the frequency of the values they are plotted against the concentration means how many samples they have concentration of 1.95 or 0 0.05 it means they are which are plotted on the y-axis that is the frequency what is the number of samples right that is the frequency of values is plotted against the concentration but if it is plotted on a normal graph paper the geochemical data would show would be like this the orange curve if it is plotted on a normal graph paper but if it is plotted on a logarithmic paper it will become normal so this is on a logarithmic paper since see here you have applied the log function so it becomes normal like this but when plotted on a logarithmic paper it will become symmetrical right similarly you can also plot the cumulative frequency curve and the cumulative frequency curve they would either plot as a straight line they would plot as a straight line both for normal and log normal distribution now if you have a single population of values for example if you are going to analyze if you have geochemical data for copper for example for only copper for 100 samples see. here in this case in this uh, distribution or in this bar diagram you can mark the threshold as the mean plus twice the standard deviation so from mean you go two steps ahead and means deviation from the mean value will be your threshold see just a this is your threshold and anything above this threshold would be your anomalous value you can also take mean plus three standard deviation and then again anything above would be probably anomalous value now if you look at two standard deviation it means if you look the if you look at the area under the curve the area under the curve should be the total frequency that is hundred percent now the area which is just below the standard deviation is around 95 percent so it means 
95% of your sample would have the normal sorry would have the background concentration of hair the anomalous would be just 5% that is above the standard deviation right now for small bodies with a single population background data what we take the median is usually taken as the background and how do we mark the threshold threshold is the value which is exceeded by only two and a half percent of the total number of observations see in this figure here you have number of observations and you have total so you have metal content on the left side median value is your 40 which is taken as the background okay now threshold is value is the value which is exceeded by only 5 upon 2 percent of the total number of observation here you can see if you take 5 upon 2 that is 2 upon 2 1 and a, 2 and 1 and a half percent of the total number of observation it will come out to be around 5.1 something which means 5 observations so there should be at least 5 observations okay so there should be at least 5 observations look here here is 2 plus 2 plus 1 so these are 5 so the 5 observations they have concentration greater than 80 right 5 observations out of 204 they have a concentration greater than 80 so therefore 80 is the threshold value so the threshold is the value which is exceeded by only 5% only 5% of the total observation sorry 5 upon 2% of the total observation they have they have to have the value greater than the threshold okay so this is how we mark the threshold in this case but most important is this that is two standard deviation means plus twice the standard deviation right now next way the next approach in which we treat our geochemical data is through geochemical map we have already done this practical in our you know we have done this practical we have prepared a geochemical map now there are two kind of geochemical map one is the data map so once you have your actual observation means your actual values of the concentration if they are recorded on a sample point and they are recorded in such a way so as to show the relationship with the geology and topography see here this is are the sample points and below is the green color and this color this map is a topographical map the astrodem right so you, here you are showing the relationship of your you are showing the relationship of your sample point with the topography here you are showing the sample point relationship with the geological unit so this is your data map now in this case the scale is so chosen that the minimum distance between the sample point is not less than quarter that means one fourth of an inch it should always be greater than inch and what we can do is we can also create profile curves profile curves means we take two or more traverses through the data map and we draw profile maps see at the bottom there are profile maps along transverse line profile curves are they are constructed when we have to show distribution along separate lines if you take two traverses and draw profile in this case these are the profile th this is how we create profile curves for example see at the bottom you have profile curves for lead for antimony right and you can create profile curve both for arithmetic scale as well as logarithmic scale right and see there are 500 feet uh, difference between the two traverses that we have taken so traverses sorry the profile curves can be constructed by drawing traverses through the data map now data map is the sample points which show relationship with the topography or the geology next one is the interpretation map that we constructed in our practical now what we do here the data is grouped into a range of concentration so these ranges they are represented by graphical symbols such as lines of equal concentration so you take concentration of 25 ppm or 100 ppm or 70 ppm and you join the lines sorry join the points of equal concentration and these are referred to as isograts they are referred to as isograts remember 
we make our geochemical map in the practicals and we're there we grouped our geochemical data or the data into a range of concentration between 25 and 150 in that practical exam, in the practical uh, uh, class right so what we are doing here is we are joining the points of equal concentration they are referred to as geochemical contours or isograph see on the right hand side this is your geochemical map and here you can see there are ranges 0 to 13 13.81 to 38.01 for gold for arsenic for silver for mercury so this is how you create geochemical map which is referred to as interpretation map the other kind map is the other kind of map is the data map so this is how you treat your geochemical data so that the geochemical anomalies they stand out okay this is the basic introduction to the treatment of geochemical data right so this was all about treatment of geochemical data. Hello. Okay. Okay. So so I end my lecture here. If you have any question, you can always message me or send a voice message on my WhatsApp. Okay. So we have completed our uh, 2.3. Okay. And all the best for your exams. Okay. So goodbye.